I make pasta probably two nights a week. And a lot of the time I use my favorite recipes, but a lot of the time it's all about looking in the fridge and thinking, okay, what goes together? What can I do quickly? And that's what this dish is. And we're making a dish in the amount of time it takes us to cook this. I'm salting my water very robustly, lots of water. So we're gonna get this cooking. I put my timer on and I set it for two minutes short of the package instructions. That way I can taste, see if it's tender. And in this case, I'm gonna be making a dish that goes right into the pot with a sauce and the pasta will cook a little bit more. So in my book, nothing kind of worse than overcooked pasta. In fact, that's the one thing. I mean, my husband, he's so tolerant. I could pretty much, you know, do anything. But if I overcook the pasta, I'm not going to hear the end of it. So we're just peeling our onion here. I have just a red onion. We're a big cabbage family. I think not only is it healthy, but there are so many ways to cook it. There are so many techniques for cooking. It's completely affordable. And not only that, it is one of the most healthy vegetables you can have. So this came about when I had already used a half a head of cabbage for something, I forget what. And I made this dish and I started thinking about it and I went with the cabbage and the bacon. I'm just gonna get my pan hot now. Always have some bacon around. I mean, if it's not in the fridge, it's in the freezer. And in fact, it's so funny because now what really happens is we never run out of bacon and we never run out of jam because every single time we go to the grocery store, we pick up both things. So I could just pick it out of the freezer if I needed to. Two garlic cloves minced and then my bacon, just a couple slices. Bacon is really just flavoring this whole thing and I don't need it to overwhelm. Get that back in the fridge and just slice it lengthwise and then slice across. This is a great start for a lot of pasta dishes actually. And I don't know, that's why I'm never worried when we get home and people are hungry and they're like, let's order pizza. Yes, they say that to me, can you believe it? And I think, you know what? I can just almost bet you, no matter what's going on, that I'm gonna be able to get food on the table faster than it takes to order pizza and it's gonna taste better too. So we have some olive oil in here, just enough to coat the bottom of the pan and everything goes in together. All the bacon, the onions, the garlic, and we're gonna cook this. Oh, I don't know, a couple minutes. You really wanna render the fat from the bacon. So I have to turn this up a little bit. Get it to a higher temp. Keep my eye on it. And then just get the cabbage cooked. Oh yeah, a few red pepper flakes. That's always in my arsenal of my made up pasta dishes. This brings a little punch. And of course I always have red pepper flakes in there in the cupboard. All right, so this cooks away and I have my cabbage. You could also do this dish with a green cabbage, but look how beautiful it is with the red cabbage. And like I said, there's something about this cabbage that ends up actually feeding so many people because it's a huge amount of food. So I am just gonna get this cut up. All right, half of a red cabbage has been shredded and it's going into my bacon, onion, garlic, hot pepper mixture. And if ever there was a happy pairing, it's cabbage and bacon. They just take each other to new levels. I know bacon could be just about anybody's dancing partner, but there's no question that bacon and cabbage together are amazing. So this cabbage is going in here. I'm just gonna mix it up a little bit. And now we're starting to play a little bit with the flavor profile. So the, the bacon is salty. The cabbage has a real earthy flavor to it. So I'm going with some currants. I have a quarter cup of currants, not too many but it just spreads throughout this whole dish a little sweet hit. Now raisins, to me, that would be too much. That would just be a little bit too big of a sweet hit, but those currants, they're tiny and they're yummy. And then I just take the rind of a lemon. So you can picture me the first night I was here scrounging in the fridge with half of a cabbage and, oh, there's a lemon over there. Mmm, lemon rind, that seems like it might be good. And it was good and I make it often. So while this cooks away and the cabbage is gonna let out some liquid and it really needs to cook down, not completely, but we're not looking for crunchy cabbage here. We want it cooked, but we don't want it mushy. And if ever there was a vegetable that is not featured to its best mushy, it's cabbage. So we're gonna keep our eye on this and let it cook and I'm gonna drain the pasta, but not before I reserve one cup of pasta water. Such a great tip for your sauces, especially ones that aren't really saucy to start out with because there's a little bit of starch in the water and it helps thicken up your sauce a little bit. So let me just turn this off and strain it. Put my head back so I don't have a facial. Okay. 
shake it off a bit. And I don't have to be too, too crazy about getting it dry because I like that water in there. So I'm just gonna leave this here for one second. And at this stage, you could put just a little bit of olive oil in here and then just stir it around a little bit and that prevents uh, pasta from sticking while you're waiting for it to go in your sauce. All right, now this is almost ready. So before I move on, I'm just gonna give one piece of taste. Mm. It's tender, a little crispy still, or rather a little crunchy, but I'm gonna move on because I have some more cooking to do. So on the bottom of this pan, don't forget we have all those beautiful bits from the onion and the garlic and the bacon. I'm not gonna let that flavor go. So I'm getting about three tablespoons of red wine vinegar to deglaze the bottom of the pan. And vinegar and cabbage, also a wonderful combination of flavors. Now you have to cook it off and you can see how right away the bits come off the bottom of the pan. It's great. And then it incorporates all the more flavor in here. All right, so now we'll build the sauce part of this dish. Doesn't it look beautiful? All right, my reserved water, one cup, half a cup of milk. We're making this a little creamy. You could use cream if you wanted. But again, remember, I was improvising when I made this dish. Oh yeah, let's see, hmm, I need a little bit more liquid. And then when I got this far and I liked the creaminess, I thought, okay, I wanna melt some Parmesan cheese in there. So a good half a cup of grated Parmesan. The basic thing is I'm using a cheese here to kind of mix with the cream and the pasta water to form a bit of a creamy sauce. Mmm, it smells so good, it really does. I'm very, very pleased with this. Okay, now last but not least, I'm just gonna taste this and make sure that I have, the saltiness is good, it's creamy enough, it's good. The cream really ties together that bacon and the cabbage. Get this on a little bit of a high temp and while I have this liquid in here, in goes the pasta. Now at this stage of the game, if you were serving a large group, this is really enough of a mixture that you could do more pasta. You could do like a pound and a half of pasta or maybe even two pounds. And you really wanna mix this up beautifully. And then one last little thing that kinda ties the whole thing together since I have the lemon zest in there, is I like just to put some lemon juice. And I just squeeze it over at the end. I don't like to cook it with the lemon juice cause that could tend to get a little bit bitter. So this is it. This is your staring into the fridge, not sure what to do with my pasta pasta.